Hi everyone and welcome to Larissa Gabu Show. This is Larissa Gabu, former Mrs. Cameroon World 2021. And today I'm going to have my queen sister, my African sister. She was Mrs. Uh, Uganda World 2021. And today we're going to hear about her story, about what she's doing, what is her platform, and just to chat together and to share ideas. I have started this Larissa Gabu show not long ago, but I've been in broadcasting for the past two years, where I've been inviting entrepreneurs and um, people who could inspire many. And I love doing this. So now after the... Mrs. World competition, I feel like I want just to start inviting and also continue encouraging to encourage women as I've been doing before, especially in my platform as a woman of God. So, but uh, now I'm going to host uh, my sister and she's going to share with us Sylvia. She's from Uganda and uh, she's married, she's a mom and I really like her and I, I like um, interviewing all these ladies, who are beauty pageants. And and also I am going to start with um, having my own project, more project with beautiful inside out. I have a lot of information coming soon in some months. Uh, Larissa Gabi Show is the general name. And in Larissa Gabi Show, I have Beautiful Inside Out. And then I have other broadcasting like Hope and Believe. And, and Beautiful Inside Out is the area of beauty. And Hope and Believe is the area of uh, humanitarian job. Because I am I'm the founder of this organization and we fight against loneliness. Uh, through activities, through events, activities like maybe broadcasting and many other things. So let's uh, welcome my dear sister. Let me see if she's connected. Thank you for watching. Thank you for sharing. And feel free to send a message to contact me through my Facebook or here on my platform on YouTube, anywhere. And I know that you're going to enjoy it. Thank you so much for watching. And let me just invite her now. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Welcome. This is Larissa Gabu. And uh, today, as I said earlier, we are going to have a wonderful lady, Mrs. Uganda 2021. I hope that I'm saying that well, because I'm used to say it in Norwegian, Uganda. But it's almost the same <laughs> thing. You're so welcome, yes. Sylvia. Thank you so much. I, I waited this day and uh, I'm so honored to have you on my platform today. You're very, very welcome. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. And uh, I know that you've been um, in the beauty pageants in many, many years. And that's the only thing I know about you and uh, that you are an entrepreneur. There's a lot of things that you're involved to. Uh, you have NGO, you are empowerment, youth, encouraging many people, working with NGOs, and you're Mrs. Uganda, and you've been missed before, and I would like you to say something about you. Who are you? There are so many people here who don't know you, and you're welcome to present yourself again. Yeah, thank you. Um, Sylvia, um, Sylvia Namtevi, Alibai, first, uh, I'm a pageant girl. I was Miss Uganda 2011, and then I've gone on 10 years later to be named Mrs. Uganda 2021. I'm very passionate about women issues, children issues, and I'm a, an advocate. You'd call me an advocate for change, especially in my country. I'm one of those young people driving the change in my community, in my society. I go talking about different issues that affect women and children, especially, and also uh, building young people in terms of uh, career choices, confidence, and self-esteem building. Awesome. Yeah, I'm also married and, um, and a mother to, to, to one son. Awesome, you have such a beautiful son. <laughs> I have also two kids and I'm uh, originally from Cameroon, but living in Norway for the past soon 14, uh, 15 years actually. Time goes so fast. 
but we I know you through Mrs. World and um, I couldn't attend the competition, but uh, I follow you guys and it was so amazing and to see the spirit in it and also when we were chatting in the group, I felt very, very like in a family. As you said, yes, and you've been doing involved in all these activities, you said many things. So do you have like a center in Uganda? In which city do you live and where is your headquarter exactly? How do you operate? Especially when with the NGO, what's the name and yeah. Um, yeah, uh, I'm based in Kampala, Uganda. Uh, head offices are in Kololo, uh, which is a suburb of Kampala. And I, I run a project called Smile with Sly. Uh, it's a project that uh, yeah, deals with uh, all the issues with tackle. Uh, and uh, to highlight the main uh, issues there is uh, safe motherhood, actually. For the past years, yes, I've done so many projects. But from uh, 2020 yeah. till now, I'm focusing so much on safe motherhood in marginalized societies of Uganda, how yeah. to teach women. Uh, yeah, how to take care of themselves while pregnant and after pregnancy, how to take care of yourself, but also wow. advocating for health care from the yes. government to be geared towards uh, mothers in this country since the mortality rate is very high. Yes. Wow, that's yeah. awesome. And uh, when it comes to, I should write something about HIV. Um, how do you help the people who have been affected with HIV in your country? Yeah, so uh, that's a project I, I, I did for a while, like uh, some years ago. Those are some of my first projects in Uganda, tackling the HIV pandemic uh, that saw in Africa with been the hardest hit by HIV, mm -hmm. uh, especially among young people. The dynamics have changed right now, but... Um, Six years ago, HIV was very prevalent in the youth and young people in Uganda. So it's people like us who are speaking out about this pandemic mm -hmm. uh, epidemic, actually, and uh, causing awareness uh, and being the voice to, to the young people in terms of protecting themselves, being yes. safe out there and uh, keeping themselves. And I also saw yeah. firsthand the impact it, um, it took on families because men were most affected by HIV. The numbers were more prevalent yes. in men. So you'd find that the, the heads of the house, the dads would die from HIV and then the women are left with their children uh, exactly. to deal with the aftermath of the HIV epidemic. So we had to educate them uh, in the in the in the terms. So if the dad is found negative mm -hmm. uh, in a home, in a rural poor home, what do you have to do? How do you handle that situation? Exactly. And then also um, we talked about motherhood for mothers uh, affected with HIV. They didn't know that there's some medication you could take that would prevent you passing on the disease to your child. Mm -hmm. So we had to encourage them to go for antenatal services and declare their status once you become a mother. Don't mm -hmm. hide your status. Declare your status so you can protect your child. Exactly. That's, that's one of the reasons why we had high numbers of HIV among young people. Most of them had contracted it through birth. Because exactly. mothers would hide their status because mm -hmm. they got it from their husband and they don't want to be looked at as, uh, yeah, I know, have that in, or, yes, so they would I hide know, it from I the this and, remind, uh, they, this, this remind me, yeah, uh, when I was still in Cameroon because I know what you're talking about. While growing up, I HIV was really a like a big sickness, like uh, COVID, no one we were afraid to die of HIV and um, people actually tried their best. But I know that spirit when people were sick, uh, they, they didn't want to get rejected by the family. So they hide. And if it's a woman, so it wasn't easy anyway. And it's not that easy up to now. And I think what you are doing is really, really awesome and uh, amazing. And really something yeah. that is needed because sometimes we think people have all the information but they don't really get it, especially to think how it could affect the future through generation. 
because uh, when children are yeah. affected, it, that's it's like the nation is finished. Um, and also saw that you do you involve in business. What's the business you're doing actually right now? Uh, yeah, I do a couple of business, but I'm a business strategic. Uh, I I do that and also uh, uh, marketing. Uh, I have a private uh, consultancy firm for for those two, strategizing for business and uh, yeah. marketing different brands and uh, products. Uh, so we should have a product, for example, do you have, I, I understand when you say consulting and marketing, giving direction, and do you have your own, like maybe a special product you are doing business with or anything? Yeah, yeah, I get uh, products or brands to, to build brands, push okay. them out in the market. Yeah, we draw the proposals. If you have a new product coming into the company and you're yeah. wondering what's the best way it can be product placement we exactly. give you what you can do it we have mm -hmm. connections to media to to print media tv radio how you can add by advertise that kind of that kind mm -hmm. of thing Great marketing campaigns for you yes. and uh, how your product can be um visible in the market exactly. or even brands that are struggling they they're already established but they yes. want to be more or they come to, to me, to us, and consult on strategies for mm -hmm. brand management and brand uh, uh, visibility to literally build your brand such that it's known, it's out there exactly. in the market and people wow. know it. Yeah, man, this is so important. It's so interesting because it's not only, like we hear sometimes, we, to make the branding is that quick is easy, but um, yeah. putting it out there, especially like me, I live in Norway and, this is not that big country, even though it's in Europe. And sometimes I think many people who are brown want to invest in their country, but they don't think they don't even have the right people. Because sometimes you even meet business uh, um, business consulting, but they are not really serious and you never know. And it's difficult to be away and to trust. I'm thinking most about people living out of Uganda and who would like to in in invest invest in Uganda because this is a big country and uh, and uh, it, uh, to find the right people is not always that easy. We are living in a corrupt world and uh, I am so amazing here and what you are doing and this is a potential that you have that could be really, really much used also especially for people like in Norway and in other countries abroad to get connected with you. I would like to share your, I will share your page, your link, mm -hmm. Uh, your business page and um, uh, what you are doing because uh, what I believe is as we all from Africa I'm living in Norway but we are African right deep in the blood and I, for me it's amazing to always yeah. have <laughs> so no matter how European I could stay here for 100 years I am an African a good one when I want to be and I, I love meeting women like you who inspire me to encourage my people from Cameroon and listening to you. I feel like, yeah. yes, Larissa, go on, do it. And I know that there are so many women that are going to watch Thank this you. video and that are going to be like, whoa, she's not just a beauty pageant, contestant, beautiful. You are a mother. And when I look your stomach, it doesn't look as if you ever had a child. You're so beautiful, sexy, and taking care of yourself, being a good wife, and, and helping the whole country. In fact, this is you were yeah. born for that. <laughs> That's what you <laughs> just said. You were born for yeah. that because if someone wants to think how, there's not a school for this. It's more practice, you know. Um, yeah, I'm so proud of you, actually. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You're Thank welcome. you so much. So yeah. I, um, I'm Larissa Gabu. I know that there are so many people in your country who doesn't know me. I'm uh, Mrs. Cameroon World 2021. And before then, I've been involved into different things, politics and I'm a leader, I'm a coach. And um, I also have an NGO different ngos but now i'm launching something when i'm talking about africa is to also open a center where we're going to have women to self-employed because when you talk about men being sick i know the culture sometimes in my country for example many women don't have voice so the woman has to be very submissive 
and especially for my tribe, it's like we don't really have voice in the house. And most of men yeah. from my tribe have many wives. I'm starting with my own dad. He has many wives and my grandfather has uh if i just remember the number of children <laughs> almost 40 kids yeah. and many 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 wife and so and we all know this is a gift for africa but at the same time for such a time as this uh we have people still living like in those days where they just have many many kids they don't know how to know raise them up and they're going to make more kids and children are all alone and the mother is sometimes left alone with all the responsibility and no job you know and this is why it moves me i um i feel like i want to encourage women to to also self-employed and in the area of sewing and uh, and fashioning and all that and uh, wow. I, I definitely love to hear from you what you are doing because as you were saying now, it just, just ignited me and encouraged me. Like, Larissa, you know what? Stand and continue what you are doing. And me, by yeah. encouraging you also to, to come on my show, it's not just to hear about Mrs. Uganda. It's to know who are you. Because I see how you shine. You Even without saying anything, you have something that when somebody sees you, you feel like you have so much life. And um, with everything it's not like you see many young girls they are very discouraging life and people are discouraged of course we understand with what is going on in the world now but you know what yeah. what you have to say to women how was uh, by the way i almost forget sorry what about mrs world i wasn't there how was it the competition how was your experience there i know that you were miss before but how was it in, yeah. uh, in las vegas yeah are you it was all right. I, I should say it was. Um, it, it was all. It was okay. It was uh, an okay experience. Um, you know, the competition was in uh, in the middle of the pandemic, so there were so much difficulties in terms of getting there. I guess even in terms of organization and all that. But mm -hmm. uh, in general terms, it was all right. It was okay. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I follow you guys every day. And the pictures, and I felt like I was there, almost there. I remember the day of the competition. <laughs> I slept at five, uh, five, uh, five a.m. Oh, yeah. yes. I was. I didn't sleep the whole because the the different uh, the time <laughs> differences. So I was following every everything. Yeah. It was amazing. Me, I've I've never been missed before, but uh, this was my first experience, and I love it knowing you guys getting in touch with so many women and. For me, this was life changing also. And I usually have broadcasting before and I've been doing a lot of broadcasting. But lately I decided to start with Beautiful Inside Out, which is going to encourage more women not to give up on the self uh, and to stand because of, um, you know, everything that's going on. But what would you like to say to ladies there, to young girls, to women? What do you have in your heart to say for, for a time as this? Uh, to to women out there and young and young girls, I'll say keep finding your voice. Uh, when you're born female, you you're born with certain struggles that uh, that life dealt you. But as you grow up to become a young lady, don't give up on the search of your voice. Make sure that you speak and you are heard. As a woman, we struggle to be heard in society, and people just take you at face value. Yet there is more you can offer and bring to the table, and you can create. But always look for that voice and make sure you are heard as a woman. Speak up, find your voice, and never give up on your dreams. So as we create these wow. sisterhoods, encouraging each other, and um, you know, trying to just encourage this uh, woman empowerment uh, movement, I say that do not give up, stand your ground, and continue to pursue your dreams. Wow. Yeah. Awesome, powerful. That was really powerful. And I just want to thank you for coming. And I don't think this is the last time. No, this is the first time. No. I'm the last. <laughs> because I yeah. feel like uh, you have a woman, you are a woman actually, who have so much, so much things. And we cannot just, just this was just a presentation. I just want to go 
deep in each things that you're doing. And I believe that we can come to organize maybe conference between uh, you, you and ladies here, even online. And why not? Maybe you visit Norway. I, I know that nothing is impossible and um, you have so much to give. My encouragement are with you. And I will always encourage you. <laughs> I am from Cameroon. As I say, I'm French. I speak French. I'm francophone, actually. So I am just yeah. learning to speak good English. And uh, but when <laughs> the, the love is <laughs> but when the love is there, so you have all the willingness to to speak. And um, you are my African yeah. sister. I love you, and I love your beautiful boy. And uh, how old is he? He's okay. He's a big man now. He's six years old. Yeah, he's so handsome. Yeah. And but he Thank looks you. like his father. He didn't take yeah. anything from you. <laughs> that's what, that's maybe, what most people say. <laughs> maybe he yeah. took some things. I don't know. But you know, too, the, as they are growing up, they change. Yeah. My boys, yeah, uh, the, the older one, he looked like me when he was yeah. little. And very much, uh -huh. and now he's looking more like more than like his father. So uh, wow. anyway, that's how it is. But I think yeah, being a, you being a, a beautiful yourself. Thank you so much, dear. Thank you. Yeah. They are they yeah. are uh, turning fourteen and eleven uh -huh. years old. That one is turning fourteen and oh. one is turning eleven. Yeah, I am. Amazing. I am. Yes, I'm for I'm turning forty three this year. I know. Oh, really? Yes, you yes. So beautiful. Thank oh my you. goodness. But anyway, <laughs> 40 is young. You're still really young. Yeah, you know. You look amazing. I don't think I look that beautiful before Mrs. Ward. When I start looking at you guys' picture, I feel like, oh my God, I need to do something. Oh, I need please, to <laughs> go, go, please. <laughs> don't let the filters lie, lie to you. <laughs> <laughs> okay but uh, it was it was really it's a journey and what i feel is yeah. we shouldn't just end it here especially when it comes to what we have because i believe we can receive it from god it's not something you learn at school of course school will help us yeah. but it's something that we are born with like when you describe everything you do did before and what you are doing it's your heart but so much love and yeah. never change it your way be the person you are be always the person you are you i don't know if you if it's you wrote that statement but i am um, i'm really impressed of what you're doing and my encouragement would be always with you and um, i'm here if anything you need support for whatever and what i can do i'm going to support you and uh, vice versa i can also ask help from you and we will continue to encourage ladies from Africa and for in everywhere where we can, all over the world. Yeah, that's that's amazing. Actually, what you're doing, you're uh, bringing all the queens together and uh, interviewing them and uh, giving sharing your platform. Actually, it's amazing, and we appreciate you. Thank you so. We much. appreciate you. Thank you. Yeah, I'm happy to hear that. I'm going to share your contacts, your page, and. I've already shared before, but I'm going to share uh, below the link. I'm going to share this video quite in many, many platforms. And then, and then people are going to contact you probably. I hope so. They will. Um, please, if you watch the video, take contact with uh, Queen Mrs. Uganda. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I want you to connect with her and uh, to share your story. And maybe you have been through something she's saying, as we mentioned, HIV, and you live in Uganda, maybe you are in Europe, and you want to support what she's doing, do so. Because it's so important to support when people are doing the right things, especially for a time as this, we just came out of pandemic, but we have, we have hope, we want to give hope to others. And I thank you for watching, you're very, very welcome. Thank you, dear friend and sister. Thank you for coming, this means a lot for me. As I said, this is not the last time, it's the first time. My greetings to your loved one and thank you and welcome back. Bye.